Hi, this is an overview of all my laser cutter projects, each one of them having a complete how-to tutorial. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And three years ago, I made a video called 40 Laser Cutter Projects and the Skills They Teach. And that's really been a very successful video. But a lot has happened since then. The pandemic started and my makerspace closed. I lost access to my laser cutter. So I bought a 3D printer and I started doing 3D printing and I still do 3D printing and I love it. But then I also moved and I got a brand new workshop and a lot more space. And I took the plunge and I bought my own laser cutter. So now I'm back, I'm cutting more than ever, I laser cut things every day, doing a lot of new projects, so it's time to update that video. Now the pictures you're going to see are not just pictures of things I've made. Everything you see has behind it at least one, sometimes several, video tutorials about how to do everything you need to know to do to make that particular project. So if you're interested in learning about how to design for your laser cutter, how to, some tips for cutting, for uh, assembly, special techniques that you can add in to your laser cutting to make things that are really special. If that interests you, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, turn on the notification button so you hear when I uh, have a new video released. Like this video and please leave me a comment because I really love reading them and responding to them. So now here's a very quick overview of all of my laser cutter projects. I have organized these projects to move from the most simple to the most complex. I've broken them into groups and each group has a playlist. And the playlist for the first one is called No Assembly Required. These projects are simple, but they teach you the most important skill you need to learn, and that is vector drawing. A vector drawing tells your laser head how to move, and you need to have that for both cutting and for line engraving. Tokens are small and simple projects. These Netrunner tokens are made out of fluorescent acrylic and rear engraving as are these Arkham Horror tokens, and you can see how nicely they pop on a dark background. But another approach is to engrave through paper and then paint, and that's how I did these Chaos tokens. They're also double-sided. These Legend of the Five Ring tokens have some image tracing in the design. You also learn how to use image tracing to do these Mass Effect edge lit acrylic and you also learn how to put another image inside of that outline. Here I'm using a piece of Starfield clip art. The source for this project is a drawing my son did when he was quite young. I took a picture of it and then I used Photoshop to make it more clean black and white. And then I took that image into Image Trace. I have a project about game rulers, and here I pull in reference images and draw over them, but I have to do it at scale, so this talks about using scale. My dice engraving video uses store-bought blanks, but then I show how to create a jig and how to use it to do engraving on the dice in a consistent fashion. So you'll find all of these projects on the No Assembly Required playlist if you're interested in doing one. This next group is also no assembly required, but it shows how you can use your laser cutter to make tools that help you in other things that you make. I show how to use stencils that you cut on the laser cutter to make these shirts and also tote bags. I show how to use the very same drawings that made those edge lit acrylic pieces can also be used to make tiny stamps that you can use to stamp precious metal clay and make jewelry. I used my laser cutter to cut acrylic templates for this Legend of Zelda quilt. And you can see on the left the drawing that I made, and on the right you can see the final finished quilt, and they're almost identical. The next group of projects are 2D+. That means you get your three-dimensional effect by layering multiple layers of 2D pieces. 
In these projects, you'll learn how to design layered pieces and how to connect them together. The simplest example of this are these Christmas ornaments. Now the snowflakes are one layer, but the others are multiple layers, and those layers are held together with a ribbon. Another simple example is this holiday wreath, which has berries on the holly. These Legend of the Five Rings game dials are two layers that are held together by brads. You can use many layers together to create boxes like this token tray. It's held together by bolts and it, I use acorn nuts as the feet. This large piece of wall art has a magnetic photo that I had made and I show how to do that. But when you take that magnetic photo off, it's got blackboard paint underneath and it can act as a blackboard. These coasters and trivets are multiple layers of wood. I used tiles that I got on vacation in Portugal as the centerpiece, and then the drawing extends out from that tile, and I show how to do that. This is a card game board for two players, and the multiple layers of wood are used to create trays for the cards to fit in in the structure that the game requires. This is the game Gwent, which comes from the Witcher 3 video game. I have a design-focused tutorial that shows you how to make these multi-layer mandalas. I show 10 techniques necessary to create something like this. But then I have another video that shows how to test colors out visually on your computer. And then I have some really helpful tips on how to paint and assemble these. I have a tutorial about how to create custom tokens and then drop them into this year-long achievement calendar so you can see visually which of your goals you're consistently doing and which you aren't. A tutorial I benefit from every day are these magnetic clamps which hold your material firmly to the bed or even in an elevated position for cutting. This modular Dungeons and Dragons board can be put together in any configuration and you can drop in those blue and orange pieces to represent water and fire. These contoured terrain hills are for wargaming. I have one version here made out of wood and another version made out of acrylic. You learn how to do acrylic fusing in this video. This is lit up by a puck light underneath. These Star Wars switch plates combine engraving and painting with Legos. These are on the walls of my studio. These Arkham Horror markers show how 2D Plus can go vertical as well. The vertical component is a piece of acrylic sandwiched by two pieces of ivory. I made similar markers with matching tokens for Gloomhaven. In a different example of going vertical, I made Star Wars X-Wing obstacles. Those meteors are actually lava rock on top of the prescribed size and shape base. The next group of projects shows how you can take simple construction up to a new level by applying special techniques. Painting is very important to a lot of my projects, and I learned my painting techniques from painting miniatures. This drift mask from Fortnite is three layers of wood in the front. There is a small multi-layer structure in the back that holds the tea lights for the eyes. The importance of painting is even more obvious in this Ragnarok mask. This is also only three layers of wood in the front. But those horns are only one layer of wood and all that three-dimensionality comes from the painting itself. I have a tutorial about making these house plaques based on photos taken from Google Maps. And painting is a very important part of the final look of these projects. Each of these images are broken into four layers and special techniques used for painting the foliage and the sky. This is a store-bought table where both the top and the bottom shelf have been engraved on the laser cutter and then I painted them. I used the same unfinished table for this project. I laser cut veneer for the top to hold cards, and then I poured resin inside a laser cut frame. I have a special tutorial where my friend Sophie from my Makerspace shows how to use gold leaf with laser cutting. And I've incorporated gold leaf into many projects since then. Learning how to use magnets has been very helpful for me. 
I use them in these two layer game dials where I embed the magnet in the top by flipping it over after cutting it and using the cut wood as a jig. Then I deep engrave a pocket for the magnet. I use the same approach on these two dial game dials. I also work with some really nice laser materials here including a laser leather. I show how to use a rotary attachment to engrave these powder coated water bottles. This is the Fortnite Llama. My next set of projects show how to create three-dimensional boxes to fit your particular need. In these tutorials, you see how to use tab and slot construction and how to test your design in the computer before you cut it on the laser cutter. This Arkham Horror card box has not only a box structure, but it has rails that hold dividers for separating the cards. Here's a magic card box done in wood with a resin finished lid. This is a magic deck box designed to be taken to game night and it's got a gold leaf design on the top. I use tab and slot construction techniques on these display shelves for miniatures. I have a version that's fused together and a version that can be disassembled and reassembled easily. I also use tab and slot construction for these dice towers. They have angled shelves inside that tumble the dice. I use tab and slot construction for all of my scale models. I have a special 14 minute video just on how to design these scale models for wargaming. I have a tutorial about this art deco building. I have another tutorial about this chapel with stained glass, acrylic stained glass, and I show how to make those. I have another tutorial about how you can take the same basic structure and by changing the roof line and the accessories, make it either steampunk or cottage. I make accessories for my modular Dungeons and Dragon board, and some of these components are 3D construction. For example, the stairways are tab and slot boxes. I store all the pieces for this board in a store-bought box that I made a custom box insert for, and all the components of that insert use tab and slot construction. I made a shadow box for my drift needlepoint and other drift memorabilia. This is a great example of how once you learn this technique, you can use it to make very custom pieces. Lighting is an example of a technique that once you're comfortable with it, you can really incorporate it in your laser cutter projects in a lot of interesting ways. I use a Philips Hughes voice uh, controlled light bulb to make this Assassin's Creed lamp. I use three large individual white LED bulbs in the light box that goes under my token box. I use very small LEDs designed for apparel use in this leather necklace. I opted to leave the battery visible in this steampunk design. My very favorite project, which is actually at the end of this video, fits into this wooden light base designed for edge lit acrylic and for a six layer edge lit acrylic. So it has six grooves with six strings of lights. This tutorial will show you how to design one to meet your needs. In this project, I show how you can use four small spotlights in the top of a display box and mirrors to drive a solar driven rotating base. In this project, I show two different stylized tree lamps made up of faux stained glass, acrylic based stained glass, and with LED light strips inside. Once you know these techniques, you can combine them into things like these advanced projects. Each of these projects combine at least two of these different techniques in a challenging way. In the game Gloomhaven, you play a very long time and you retire characters over the course of your game. I made this modular shrine to honor those characters. Each one of these boxes can fit into the existing structure and they light up automatically without changing any of the wiring. I collaborated with my son to make this World of Warcraft piece of wall art. 
the front is a three-layer crest that my son did an incredible three-dimensional paint job on. And the glowing gold cutouts are a piece of acrylic over a relatively sophisticated light box in the back. I designed this chess set after analyzing other chess sets and coming up with a style. And then it uses that vertical 2D plus construction with a lot of inlay. Then I made a matching board and designed it to be a storage board so that when not in use, it sits up like this and all of the pieces fit into their custom shelves. I made a display board for my Horde's miniature army. It has vertical and horizontal edgelet acrylic, both running off of the same rear power source. The LED strips are driven by remote and the miniatures are held in place by magnets. Here's another display from my Horde's army. After trying unsuccessfully to cut the acrylic rod for this on my laser cutter, I did the columns in my 3D printer and I used sculpting techniques to put a thematic leaf design on those columns. And I used two color, color changing filaments, so it's copper when you look at it from one direction and steel color when you look from the other direction. I have a tutorial to show the process of taking a large complex game like Gloomhaven and creating a box insert for it that holds all the components but does it inside the constraint of the box, the original box size. And as promised, here is my favorite project. It is an edgelet acrylic lighthouse. Uh, it fits into that stand I showed you earlier. It has six layers of acrylic. The lights in the base are programmable, and I have created programs for sunrise, for daytime, for northern lights, for fantasy, many different situations. These programs are animated, so the sun rises gradually, the northern lights flash. I've scheduled these programs to come on at different times of the day, and this is running right now in my beach house as I make this video. My only frustration is the camera really does not capture how beautiful it is. So there you are, 60 laser cutter projects. If you see anything here that inspires you, you can learn how to do it. Just make a note of which playlist it's on. Go to the description of this video or go to my channel and go to the playlist tab. Find that playlist and that project and go ahead and do it. Or better yet, modify it and make it your own. The only thing better than making something on your laser cutter is to make something no one else has ever made before. I have a lot of other great laser cutting projects I'm working on. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you're notified when a new video comes out.